Understanding how nn.module and nn.linear work is not that intuitive. But grasping how these classes function and how to apply them is fundamental for us as machine learning practitioners. I've spent the last few days battling through the PyTorch documentation and Stack Overflow so you don't have to. Everything I've discovered during my research I stuffed as densely as possible into this video. Since using NumPy is easy, I've explained the same script first with the NumPy library and then with PyTorch. Additionally, I used a simple but relevant example to offer you the best return on your time. Okay, let's dive in. Besides your job as a machine learning engineer, you choose to work as a fitness trainer. Your client has been training for 8 weeks and isn't quite satisfied with the result yet. He has already lost a ton of weight and reduced his body fat percentage to 11%. But he wants to know how much he will have lost after 10 weeks. Since you are always well prepared, you open your laptop, pull out the data you tracked and develop a suitable model. On the right side you see the PyTorch script and on the left side the NumPy script with which we'll start. In the first paragraph we define the data. X is the variable containing the NumPy array of weeks. Y contains the 8 body fat percentage values of your client. We define a simple model class. Inside the class we initialize the attributes weight and bias as uniformly distributed random numbers. Which is a fancy way of saying that it's equally likely to draw any number in that range. Like in rolling a dice. Why we do it in this way will become clear when we get to the nn.linear class in a minute. We define the mean squared error as a loss function and create an instance of the model class. We then define some arbitrary learning rate, number of training steps and create the lists for visually tracking our training progress later on. The next part consists of the training loop. Here we send the data contained by X through the linear equation from line 14. The weight and bias are, as we know, randomly initialized in the first epoch. The prediction goes into our loss function and the gradient with respect to W and B is calculated. To help you understand what's happening mathematically, I show you the two derivations using the chain rule here. If you are interested, just pause the video. We subtract the gradients from the parameters and append these and the loss to our list. We will then repeat this 500 times. Visualized, it looks like this. Here we see the model as a line and the points as the measured body fat percentage depending on the weeks. Next to it we see the model parameters plotted against the loss. The loss gets smaller as the weight decreases. In contrast, the bias must increase for the loss to decrease. In the graph you can clearly see that B slowly develops to the correct y-intercept and the weight slowly equals the correct slope. If you as the fitness coach now utilize the trained model, you can tell your client that he will likely be at a body fat percentage of 10% in 2 weeks. Perfect. Quick side note here, I'm not a fitness trainer but I create these videos on the side. If you want to see more of them, subscribe to the channel, give me a like and leave me your feedback in the comments. Now let's see what nn.module and nn.linear can do. As in the first part of this video series, we define x and y as torch.tensors. Since the linear class usually works with big matrices and tensors, we have to add a dimension with dot unsqueeze. Otherwise, nn.linear wouldn't be able to understand the input. Here 1 stands for columns and 0 would add a row dimension. Now we arrived at the exciting part. Just like in the script on the left, we define a model class that should perform our linear calculation. For this we tell the model class that it should inherit the properties of the so-called parent class nn.module. One important advantage of using this base class is that you have the possibility to easily stack different layer classes in one model. That's important for more complex problem than this one. You just have to understand this basic setup once. Using the super function we initialize the parent class and then assign the attribute self.linear to the child class called model. For this we use the nn.linear class. This does exactly what the linear transformation we described on the left side does. It takes the input, multiplies it by a uniformly distributed random weight and adds a random bias too. The inputs inside the brackets are the numbers of the input and output features. We choose one here because we have 8 times 1 vectors each. So we see how all 8 input values are transformed into 8 output values at once. This will happen during training with the nn.linear class. Practical, isn't 
isn't it? Especially with larger and more complex models, this functionality pays off. If you're now wondering why we didn't define tensors with requires grad equals true as in the last video, then you've mentioned an important point. This function is also included in the linear class. With the following code, we can check whether gradients are calculated for the weight and bias torch tensors. We then build the forward method in the same way as in the NumPy script. The following lines also look familiar to us. We know what happens in the for loop already. Only the notation is a little different. I explained the PyTorch functionalities loss.backward and torch.nograd in the last video. If you don't know them yet, feel free to check out that video. After the model has finished training, we can plot the training process and the data. We see an identical result to the NumPy script here. I hope you found some value in this video and learned something new. I posted both scripts in the video description. Thanks for watching.